What's going on? Welcome to the weekly axe kicking. Today is a very different installment of the axe kicking in that we're not going to be playing the guitar, but we're going to be talking about uh, the various factors and things you have to pay attention to when playing a gig. This gig in particular is an outside gig, so it's actually a lot different. There's many more things that you have to consider when you're playing an outside gig in you know temperatures in the teens. So um, I'm just gonna walk through a bunch of the things that I, uh, you know, that I uh, had to take into account from, you know, trying to stay warm to all the advertising things, and um, in the end, I'll talk a little bit about how everything went. So here we go. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of a little preparation part for um, a gig I'm playing. It's outside of a mall, and today has a temperature of a high of 25 degrees. So the first thing I did, you know, my obvious concern was how am I going to keep my hands warm? And I ordered these things. They're called wristies, and uh, let me just put one on really quick. It's pretty awesome because they're fingerless gloves. There you go fingerless gloves and it was actually they're actually a little too loose um, like too much of the fabric was hanging off so I don't know if you can see it there I had to staple them uh, uh, there we go I had to staple them to make them a lot tighter <laughs> but uh, it's working right now and you can't see it but inside there's a little pouch and those, that pouch is where I will be putting in some of these the hand warmers and I haven't actually tried this out yet so I'm not sure how it'll work or how effective it'll be but uh, you know, it's better than nothing. And uh, the rest of the stuff here is just, this is the basic um, setup you see in all the whack videos, the stuff on the side. Massive box of business cards, there's about 1,300 in there. Um, demo CDs for press kits. <laughs> Physical press kits just kind of laying on the floor. Um, oh, this is the part that's always cut off. I'm sure none of this is interesting to most people. <laughs> this is a life. This is a giant sized version of uh, of Brain from the TV show Animaniacs. Is this thing in the mid '90s killer cartoon? Um, yeah, I don't know why that's there. I put it there a few days ago. I just thought it was hilarious. So there you go. Oh, it's definitely worth mentioning that for these wristies, I did a lot of practicing with them just to get acclimated to them, just to see, you know you know, get used to the feel and all that kind of stuff. You want to over-prepare for this kind of situation. You know, I've been playing guitar for a long time and I've never performed with a pair of these on my hands. So, you know, got to make it regular, can't make it an uncomfortable situation. All right, in a very nearby room, this is the guitar case room. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guitar cases right now. Uh, a couple of them are borrowed right now, so not all of them are mine. Different guitars for different gigs, obviously. For this outside gig, they're miking me, and they actually have pretty good quality stuff, so I'm using the Sh Kenny Hill guitar. Should be in this one. Yeah, there it is. I'm using my Kenny Hill guitar, which um, is basically my, <clears throat> it's like my bass model concert guitar. I do have a much cheaper classical guitar, but I also have a much more expensive classical guitar. That would be Heidi, who rests in here. Heidi is my most treasured guitar. And, um, you know, for these conditions, two hours out in the cold isn't going to ruin it. But at the same time, I'm still reluctant to use the Heidi guitar. And the Kenny guitar has much lower action. It's like a, it's like an Ibanez RG of classical guitars, um, if any of you guitar freaks get that reference. And for this particular gig, since it's not a super formal thing, you know, I have no problem bringing along a tip jar. And just a little quick pointer about bringing a tip jar, I always throw in a few bucks before the show, just to kind of get things rolling. Now this is brand new. This is the Jim Perona banner. And let's just take a quick look at it. Jim Perona, classical guitarist. On the bottom right here, classical music for your special occasion, private lessons, www. Dot .jimperona.com Now, a lot of the paid gigs um, that I do, whether it's a cocktail hour, um, you know, something like this, you know, just kind of playing outside the mall. There's also been, you know, like office parties, art shows, whatever. 
I'm not exactly a featured performer, you know, so it's not like a recital setting where everybody's sitting down and paying attention to everything that I do. People can choose to come hang out and listen to my music for a while if they want. So, and at the same time, I can't really socialize with them because I'm being paid just to play my guitar and provide that, you know, nice music for whatever occasion. So this banner is pretty much um, that connection I have to, you know, the patrons or whoever, and it tells them exactly the kind of services that I offer. And the concept here is just a full-scale integration thing. I have a stack of business cards right next to, on a music stand, right next to this banner. They can pick one up if they'd like. They see what I offer. If they're interested, when they get home, or just, you know, on their iPhone or Android or whatever smartphone, they can just go ahead to jimprona.com. On jimprona.com, there's, you know, all the booking info, all the different information for the different kind of private lessons I teach. So it's full scale integration thing, or at least, you know, that's the concept I had in mind. We'll see how effective it is. But I figured this was definitely worth trying and it came out really well. So I'm pretty excited about it and this is the first time I'm gonna try and use it. Also, by the way, the nice thing about a banner as opposed to, you know, just going the cheap way and making a poster, this will survive any and all of the elements. So that's pretty much the reason I went the banner route. All right, so we're pretty much all good to go. We got all the materials ready to do this gig from the business cards to the banner to the wristies to everything in between. Got my Santa hat since it's the holiday season and it's gonna keep my ears warm, hopefully. And uh, just because I always try to stay somewhat connected to uh, you know, my rock and metal side, even if I'm doing classical gigs, under all these layers I have Motorhead, ACDC, and Steve Vai long sleeves. So let's do this. All right, so here's the setup here. We are on the scene. They actually did a killer job here of uh, getting some effective space heater use. It was a bit sketchy last time. Guitars, PA going both ways, and here's just my little promotional thing. Had to advertise a bit on the banner because um, I didn't have appropriate hangers for this kind of environment. But, you know, everything's set up, ready to go. Business cards, tip jar, banner, and my uh, makeshift weights to keep the banner down. I better get to work. Cool. All right, so a little post-gig report here. First of all, the wristies, they were good, but not great. I mean, and to be fair, I don't think they were built, for, I don't think they were manufactured for 15 degree weather. So, you know, I'd recommend them and uh, they didn't really hinder my playing that much whatsoever. So thumbs up on those. All right, now the one that I was really curious about, um, the banner and business card website, you know, that whole integration idea. That was a success and I'll tell you why. The um, when I was playing, a uh, mother walked by with her daughter and she picked up a business card and she saw on the banner that private lessons and what I wasn't prepared for, she came up as I was playing and started talking to me. Now, I didn't want to, you know, just ignore her or whatever, so I immediately <clears throat> uh, switched from whatever I was playing, I think it was a, uh, I think it was the uh, Asturias Albanese, and I started playing Villalobos A2 number one, which classical guitar players, all of us have pretty much learned at this point, and, you know, it's a big warm-up piece, so, you know, if you play it kind of slow, you can play it in your sleep. So I started playing that, so I'm playing and I'm talking to her, and um, she had, as I said, she'd seen the private lessons notice on the banner, and she was, you know, basically inquiring about private lessons for her daughter. <clears throat> and uh, we worked out, you know, all the details, and luckily we are both, you know, kind of from the same area. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, that right there, you know, the banner immediately bears some fruit. It's a great thing. And, um, and just that, you know, even if it's just that inquiry, you know, that totally makes it worth it. Because if she recount, if, if that becomes like a repeating student, then as all you musicians out there know, if you get a great rapport going with one student, and if it's a kid, the parent of that student, word of mouth can come into play. They recommend you to you know, other parents and whatever, and uh, all of a sudden your teaching studio can expand, and it's a great thing. So the banner is already a big thumbs up for me. I can't recommend that kind of thing enough. 
And then just a couple general ups and downs of this gig. Um, the downs, I mean, just obviously the weather. And while it was going on, my this, one of the space heaters broke, and for about 10 minutes there, my, I could not feel my fingers. And, um, you know, the adjustment I made was I played the absolute easiest parts of my repertoire. Like, you know, people, <laughs> for about 10 minutes, people heard the, the prelude from the first cello suite by Bach. They heard it being played over and over again until you know someone was able to come out and f fix the space heater so as far as the pros of this gig you know first of all it's a well-paying gig so that alone makes it worth it and uh, second of all you know lots of random people who are walking by taking a look you know listening for like 30 seconds of your playing and then picking up a business card you never know where that can lead you know just because they don't come up and talk to you while you play it doesn't mean that they're not interested in some point at either taking a lesson or, um, you know, hiring you for some sort of private event. You know, random uh, woman or gentleman walking by who picks up your card months from now can hire you to play their daughter's wedding ceremony. So, you know, between all that, all those advertising materials from the banner to the business cards and stuff, your name is getting out there. And that's the most important thing. You never know where that can lead. I hope uh, I hope this provided some kind of valuable insight to playing a gig as far as preparation, the advertisement, getting your name out there, how to make the most of your performance. So hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week.